up, G Show Land, and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1, and this is the Godzilla Block Party. Woo wee! What you heard just there was a very small snippet of Godzilla's March that will be featured in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yesterday, they had the Godzilla, the legendary Godzilla King of the Monsters panel at the Tokyo Comic Con. They played that music before the panel started. Uh, that was just a snippet of it. I can, and that was poor quality. I cannot wait to get my hands on that soundtrack and listen to that over and over and over and over and over again to feel like the one and only king of the monsters because dang it, brothers and sisters, I freaking love it. Ah, but without any further ado, let's get right down to this podcast. And before we do that, let me introduce you to my right hand when it comes to the Godzilla talk and my left hand on the G show, G73, a.k.a. Megzi, a.k.a. Chase, my brother, what's up? What is cracking, guys? Last night was a big, big explosion of Godzilla glory, and that was awesome. Oh, it, it sure was, man. And we are here to talk about the things we like, to talk about the things we did not like. And I'm going to start it off with the thing I did not like right off the top. We didn't get a trailer, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Right? We 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 got part of a trailer. We we got we got we got a teaser that was a mashup of what the original teaser was back at regular like San Diego Comic Con earlier this year in July, and then a couple of new shots. That was it. We'll get into that thing in a minute though. But I mean, like we did not. I I was honestly I thought we were getting a full full length trailer. If there was any a time to do it, it was last night. It was yesterday. It was. At Tokyo Comic Con, you bring Japan's biggest monster, okay, Monstar, Kaiju, to its homeland, and you do not deliver a tra- I, I just, I think they dropped the ball there. I would have really, I really, if I was in charge, that's where we drop a trailer. We give the Japanese fans a taste of this, what we're doing with Godzilla, and they do it in good graces because... Good Lord have mercy. They, they're utilizing not only Godzilla, but Rodan, Mothra, King Ghidorah. They, they are taking classic Toho monsters and bringing them into a new age. Yes, and another side of the world. But regardless, I think this was the perfect opportunity to put it there. Drop the trailer. Showcase some of their things. And I'm not saying spoil the movie. We had that talk in the last uh, podcast. But showcase some of those things. Hit some bullet points. Get Give us a roar or two. And I think everybody would have been happy. Well, uh, most everybody. We have those trolls and those naysayers still in the fandom. But I honestly believe most everybody would have been happy. We would have been, you know, grateful and all that stuff. And maybe I'm just being an old fogey. I really wish there was a trailer. We didn't get a trailer. I heard. I, I Chase, did you, you said that the trailer is coming next week. I mean, if that's the case, I'm yeah, cool with no, that. Mike, Mike. Um, uh, Mike Doherty confirmed that at the end of the uh, the teaser that he showed, the rest will come next week. Oh, man. I, I wish it was. I really, I, I just feel they dropped the ball. I think it would have been beautiful to, to premiere that in front of a Japanese audience. But again, it's what it is. I'm patient. I can wait for another week, you know, unless, unless some random satellite doesn't come crashing from the sky into my room and kill me while I'm sleeping. I another Y2K. Y2K? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm totally, I'm totally good. I'm totally good. But um, yeah. What about you, bro? I mean, that that was like, that was my biggest beef with the whole presentation. And again, it's not like I'm so angry and I hate. I'm so, I'm not mad. I just thought they dropped the ball. I'm okay with the small teaser we got. I'm okay with everything we've got. And we're gonna get into that, but. Did did you have any mis misgivings that they didn't show a trailer, or are you okay with it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt like I go back and forth because I feel like that should have been the moment they shown the new trailer. I mean, it's for one, I'm mostly kind of just bummed on like the side, like that's kind of unfair to the you know Japan Comic Con. I mean, like, come on, you you guys could have done that. Um, but I also go back on the for uh, go back because 
they did show the teaser, and to me, I know that just means Mike Doherty and Legendary. They know what we want, and they're going to give it to us, but they're going to play around with us, and they're going to hype it up as much as they can. And that's and, and in the midst of it all, to me, that was just perfect, you know, because, yeah, I was disappointed it was a teaser, but that teaser did show some interesting things. It was a couple from, of couple um, of shots. We were, yep. Yeah, and you did hear a roar or two. <laughs> um, um, uh, but uh, it 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 um, it kind of to me was just like you know we know you guys want a trailer and we're gonna give it to you, but this we're we're gonna have some fun with it, and I like that. Um, but with everything else, like the concept art and everything that was shown and to the figures and stuff like that, like it, it, it kind of like, I didn't really care once everything was getting rolling. Um, because like, it was just still new stuff, you know? Right. And it was just, it was just completely satisfying to me for what, but the, my main thing literally was the, the music, the mm. hearing, Hearing Godzilla's march, Akira Ifukube's Godzilla theme again modernized, that was just like my heart being ripped out and heaven's lights just blasting it to oblivion. Like that made my heart sing. And I cannot wait until the movie comes out because there's supposed to be a whole bunch, like apparently there's supposed to be a whole bunch of themes. You know, like Mothra's theme, Godzilla's theme, and it makes me wonder what other themes are going to be in it. Right. But Godzilla's theme, that just sounded beautiful. And I can't wait till the trailers come and they're like the fast 50 second trailers on the TV we're seeing. And it's just the, you know, the updated, modernized Godzilla theme and Godzilla just bashing shit. And then it's like Godzilla, May 31st. <laughs> I cannot wait. I, I, I just can't wait for that. <laughs> Me neither. My 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 only concern this is what I'm really scared of is that they do drop the trailer this week or, or this week coming right, and Marvel decides to drop the Avengers Four trailer also. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good for the fans. Don't get me wrong. They're like, oh, we got both these trailers. Holy shit! But then on the other side, it's like, yeah, oh shit, it that is coming. It basically kill everyone and every fandom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. It'd be too much for everyone's hearts to take. <laughs> oh man, but uh, I I agree with you, man. That that score, hearing Akira Ifukube's music, his iconic Godzilla march, you know, with this bombastic orchestrated background, I went. But I, 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 like you said, it, you you described it perfectly to a T. It's like you ripped out my heart, my beating heart, and heaven's light shone down on it. It's just just outstanding. So. Oof, I tell you, I can't get enough of that thing. I must have listened to that a whole, like, a hundred thousand times already. I'm lying, but it's close to that number. Uh, but, okay, so, we didn't get a trailer. That's fine. Um, D- Mr. Doherty said it's coming to the end of this week. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, knock on wood. I'm, like I said, no satellites fall and crash on my head. But, that panel showcased other things. They gave us some concept art. Of Rodan, of Mothra, of Godzilla and King Ghidorah locked in battle, which was okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't really mind that. The Rodan pick, to me, was the best we can see before we get the high def picks of them. Um, the Rodan, what, excuse me, was beautiful because it, it reminded me of that maquette that we saw a couple of months back. Remember? It had yeah. the, the way the feathers were edged off, like, it looked like feathers. His wings. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it was like, wait a minute, is it that? Are we? Is that what we're getting? And I mean, honestly, I absolutely love that maquette. I still love that maquette. If that is Rodan's design, because from what we've seen so far, we're gonna go into all that. It it kind of it kind of looked like it, but it it did have some like modifications. The maquette looked like it was smaller. Um, in terms of how it you know it would be featured in the film. Whereas this concept art, it, you know, 
it looked like Rodan. It looked like an original gigantic monster. So I'm all cool with that. Um, like I said, the Godzilla versus King Ghidorah uh, image, that it didn't really do nothing for me. I was like, okay, that's cool. Other than that, I was like, ah, oh, the Rodan one popped. The Mothra one was too small to really take in. You know what I mean? Um, we see the wings and they look beautiful. The color scheme is gorgeous. But as far as the body goes and the concept art, it, it's very hard to see unless you have like a super dope camera with the super dope zoom that come that that comes out without pixels. I don't have that, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, but what about you, the concept art man? What did you think of those images? Oh, I loved them. Um, I, 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 the concept art for Rodan was beautiful. Um, I, I think we only got like one image though. It was just the one image. Um, Rodan had a good, I, I liked Rodan, but I, I liked, it was interesting what Mike Doherty was like stating about it. You know, it's interesting with Rodan having the painting on its wings and stuff. And the wings are supposed to ward off Godzilla, the painting, cause they're like supposed to be Godzilla's eyes on the ends of the wings. And to me, that just kind of opens up a whole nother theory of what Mothra really is and stuff. And like what the connection between Godzilla and Mothra are going to be. That's really interesting and stuff thinking about that now. Um, but I mean, it looked, it looked really close to, to me, the color scheme looked very close to the traditional Mothra. Um, the body, uh, the, the, the body is a little bit different and, We'll go into that once we talk about the SHMA uh, uh-huh. figures, but um, the artwork, the the art, the concept art looked great. Um, but like to me, like it was it was really just the Godzilla stuff that I kind of wanted to see um, because I'm kind of like, and you and me both, we were kind of on the fence where we kind of just wanted to have the monsters put on hold until further notice, right? <laughs> And um, they showed a lot, and I mean, I loved, I loved the Godzilla image though. Of um, it's actually my Facebook banner background right now, and it's the um, the one that they showed of Godzilla and King Ghidorah in the city fighting, and it's all red and stuff like that. Like that was great, and I also enjoyed like they uh, apparently they hinted a concept art of Godzilla and King Ghidorah getting to a scrabble underwater. And stuff like that. So that's going to be interesting to see too. But again, that's kind of spoilery. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like you guys could have just kind of not have said anything to that degree. But I'm all for it. Um, other than that, I didn't really have any gripes or anything. I loved. I just I loved everything I saw. Yeah. So. Yeah, I get I get you. Um, the 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 spoilery things. That's what I worried about. What I worry about with the trailer and 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 how they go about. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Promoting the movie. Promoting the movie. That's how I, I'm worried about how they promote this movie because again, Kong Skull Island. I was so so ready. That first that Comic Con trailer tore me apart. I said, "Oh my God, this is happening. This is gonna be insane." And then I went to the theaters and saw Kong Skull Island, and I was like, "Everything in the trailer is all of the shots in the movie." Like it drove me mad. I was upset. I was really picked up. I, and I like Kong Skull Island a lot. I enjoy that movie. I, I love it, actually. But I was just disappointed that they showed pretty much all the, the, the good shit in the trailer. And so it was like nothing was left for the imagination. It's like, all right. I really hope they don't do that here. I really hope they don't do that here. Um, because, and here we go. Well, let's get right into it. The Monster Arts figures were released during this panel. Or after the panel. The fact is they were on the floor of the Tokyo Comic Con. And we've got our looks. We know Godzilla looks like. Oh, before we go into the, the other monsters, let's just talk about the small details with Godzilla and the changes. I love the feet. Again, I, I wasn't a big... I did, never had a problem with his elephant stumps in the first one. I didn't care because, honestly, it's just a giant monster. Let's not worry about the feet. But I like that they changed it a bit. He's got... It looks like a traditional Godzilla foot. That's cool. But still maintaining elements of the elephant stump. The dorsal fins is a lot more Shodai Goji. And I love that a lot. I had no problems with the dorsal fins in the, in the 14, G14. But my goodness, 
the dorsal fins here look like traditional Toho dorsal fins. I dig it. That being said, let me ask you a question. Do you think Godzilla's evolving? Yeah, I, I think so because Mike Doherty basically said that uh, a ye- uh, about maybe a year ago when the first little image popped online of Godzilla in the blue screen. Remember that? Yeah. And it's the face. Someone asked, is Godzilla's design going to change at all? Are you guys changing Godzilla's design? And Mike Doherty specifically said, he is evolution in the flesh, is he not? And oh, that, you know, that, that scares me. That, that, that brings vibes of, uh, why can't we go a podcast without referencing this movie? It brings me vibes of Shin Godzilla. Evolution at its finest. <laughs> I I don't think it's going to that degree. I know. <laughs> talking about only just the minor changes. Right, I, mean, right. I don't think Godzilla is going to... Sprout wings and fly? I, I mean, <laughs> I think this is what we're going to get in Godzilla versus Kong, too. We're not going to get something that's, like, four-headed or anything like that. <laughs> I got you. I'm sorry again, Shin Lovers. I didn't mean to bring that up again. <laughs> but, um, all right, cool. So, you know, that's cool. I like, I like it, the slow... But sure, evolution of Godzilla in the legendary universe. I dig it again. Dig the the the, the feet look kind of traditional with elements of the elephants uh, stubs and the dorsal fins. Fantastic, fantastic. And his tail. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even paying attention. I had like I didn't even know there was a thing with a tail. I, what, what's with yeah, the tail? Well, they they made it traditional Godzilla tail with the ball at the end of the tail. Oh, you know, so like it's not like did. the pointy tip anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. uh, man, I like that because it was a remnant of Gino. That's right. I said it. Don't unsubscribe. Don't unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's get, get along. But um, yeah. And but yeah, to me, I Godzilla looks great. Um, I, when they unveiled that uh, special statue for Mike Doherty and honoring the film and everything. I, I I loved it. I love I love the dorsal fins. Wait, I love what the way statue? It looks. You're talking about that like uh, giant size, like six foot statue. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. that thing is huge, man. Woo! Um, God, but and I I like the feet. It reminded me of '64 Godzilla a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, I I dig it. Um, and to me, like to me, this Godzilla now is the incarnation of a traditional but original Godzilla design. Like, if you want to incorporate past to present into a new mold, this is the perfect epitome of that to me. I like that. Uh, the, the dorsal fins are not necessarily 100% 54s, but they're they look like it and they're sh- but they're stretched out like like 2000s and there's just it's just a great mock up and i i like that you know so I, this whole movie just it just screams childhood so everything that i'm seeing i'm like oh my god this is like going to be the fans love letter so i agree yeah I agree. It's, it's so, I'm still shell shocked. <laughs> it's so funny in, in, in you know anticipation of this week, of this weekend coming of December first coming, and you know uh, outside of Godzilla, all, all the other stuff I like, the fandom, I mean, the comic books and all that stuff. You got the Spider Man reviews start rolling in for, into the Spider Verse, then you got the Aquaman reviews rolling in, right? And I'm all like, wow, it's so awesome to see, like you said, it's your childhood. Like Spider Man, I knew it was going to be good regardless, right? But it's animation. You can do what you want with animation. It's great. Uh, but Aquaman was the test. And seeing the, the reviews rolling in, talking about how it's just like this insane cartoon brought to life, that's exactly what I want to see, you know, for something like Aquaman. I've always been an Aquaman fan since I was a kid. Godzilla, like you just said, childhood coming to life again because it's always been live action. It's always been on screen. And regardless of the design of Big G... The quality of the movie, we always fell in love with it. We were in love with it. And now in this generation, in this day and age where we're adults and getting to see this whole new iteration while Toho is still doing what they're doing on their end. I mean, come on. It's it's just it's a beautiful thing. And 
I honestly believe in Mike Darty. I some of the things he's said, uh, the way he loves the property, and yeah, I, I think it's in solid hands here. I think we're in good hands, especially because we're bringing in other classic Toho monsters that we're going to talk about right now. Who should we start off with, Chase? I'm going to let you start off with these monster art figures. Who should we start off with? Should we get it out of the way and take the negative, or should we just bum rush into the positive and then go to... I, I think we should go from Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah. In that order? I, yep, in that order. Start it off. The way, the way it was shown, because they showed Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, so... All right. Well, start it off, brother. You you were the you were the man that was hooking us up with all the information. So, your thoughts, no Mothra? Worries. So, they unveiled Mothra's SH Monster Arts, and I'm I keep going around, and I'm seeing people that just absolutely hate it. Yeah. Um, there are people that like it a lot. Um, and there are people that are kind of 50-50 on it. I'm one of the things – well, I'm not one of the things, but uh, yes, even though I'm a creature of my own entity. But, <laughs> um, I'm one of the people that say that I, I actually like this Mothra design, but however, it's not that I hate it. It's that I'm still shell-shocked by it because I've never seen a Mothra design like this before. And that's where I think everyone is kind of coming from is that their 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 unfamiliarity recognition with it is making them think they hate it. Be and that's where I'm at because it's like I don't dislike the design, but out of all of the things that I saw, it was the one where I'm kind of like it's not necessarily the figure or the design that struck out to me the most. However, Mothra is the most excited, like one of the, my most excited monsters I want to see in the movie. But the design to me was so bizarre and unfamiliar and strange that I'm just kind of like, kind of like wavering back and forth. Like I'm trying to analyze what this creature really looks like. And I remember you we were talking last night, like you were saying it looks like, uh, well, I said it, to me it reminded me of Kamakaris. Right. And you, and you were saying, I don't remember what you said. It, that, it doesn't uh, have the me. serrated edges on its uh, praying mantis arms. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to me, it, it looks like, it reminds me of like rain, the rainbow Mothra head, but mm. mixed with like a mosquito type body. Yeah. But, but to me, like, I feel like once the movie comes, I feel like that design's going to be pretty interesting. Um, but, like, to me, like I said, it's not that I hate it because I don't. It's just it's just still strange to me because, like, it's different with Rodan and King Ghidorah. Those designs you would think would be very familiar and usually are. And Mothra, you would think, would be very similar, too, because you'd like, you know, how hard is it to resemble a butterfly or a moth? But this design looks so mosquito-y, and, and I think they're trying to make it like a Muto, you know? Yeah. And to me, like, that's really, I like it, that's interesting, that's keeping the consistency of the universe kind of you know, with it within its lore and the world they're making. But it's like my brain is like trying to like comprehend what it's seeing, but it's also shell shocked because it loves what it's seeing at the same time. Like I love the look at like the painting and the colors of it. I think Mothra looks really, really beautiful. But there's like certain things about it where it's like if you look at it at an angle, it's like, huh. This is kind of funny, <laughs> but to me, like, it's one of those things where it's like, I feel it growing on me the more I look at it. So other than that, I don't really have anything towards it that I dislike, but, but I'm, I'm waiting to see more, you know? Yeah. So I think I'm in the same boat with you. I'm waiting to see more. I'm, I'm not particularly fond of Mothra's new design. The wings are spectacular. Beautiful, the color scheme gorgeous. That's Mothra. The body, though, it's like okay. I mean, I, I'll be honest with y'all. 
This morning, I went. I looked up moths. I like. I did. I just like googled moths. Like, <laughs> I gotta look at this. Like, I did. Like, I was like, I don't get this shit. What the? Because it throws me off with those mantis-like arms and or appendages, I should say. Now, we did get not a drastically different, but a radically different Mothra in GMK. The 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 dangling legs, like I enjoyed that. It looked a lot. It looked plasticky. I get that. A lot of people's complaints about it was it looked plasticky, um, and I I totally get that. But it was a drastically, a uh, uh, radically not drastically different design. It was radically different. Like it there's Mothra, but oh my god, look at the long leg appendages and all that stuff. This is drastic difference. The only thing that reminds me of Mothra are the wings. You know, the the insect body is, it's an insect. It creeps me out for something that's supposed to be kind of uh, majestic and beautiful. And I get it. You really can't make an insect look beautiful. I'm just saying, unlike my main man, Megalon, right, Chase? Uh, <laughs> it's like, it, it's very hard to do. So I don't understand the thought process of going to, let's make it look really insect like and let's change it up let's like morph a couple of different insects into this thing it's like the queen of the insects almost instead of the queen of the monsters you know what i mean um yeah and that and to me but to me that sounds cool no that and i really cool. and it, you know what and it does i'm not i'm not knocking it and again I'm, i i'm not i don't outright hate this thing i, I really want to see this thing in motion not to make up my mind but because I'm intrigued about it, you know, like that's the perfect word to describe it. It's intriguing because it's one of those things where it's like you're not too sure how you feel, right? So. Exactly. Now, again, the body is kind of ske- it skews me out a bit. It's like, oh shit! If that thing was flying around my head, I'm running, I'm ducking. Ah, get away from me! Right? <laughs> yeah, my fly water. But outside of that, the wings is, is Mothra's wings. Absolutely gorgeous, like I said. I love the design. I love the patterns. It's so beautiful. Um, but I just... You know what it is? It's not even the appendages. It's the eyes that freak me out. Because they are more streamlined instead of giant, round, bulbous eyes. The way I'm used to Mothra. This is why I looked up moths this morning. And when I looked up moths, guess what they have? Giant bulbous circle eyes. I was like, what the hell is this? Did you did you ever see that concept art um, from uh, Larry Quatch? Uh, or th- or uh, yeah, yeah, Larry Quatch. Larry Quatch. She did the me- the the Mecha Mothra. Mm-hmm. The robotic Mothra. That's what it looks like. Hell, it actually looks like Larry Quatch's Mothra, just a little bit slimmer. Yeah. If you look at Larry Quatch's Mothra design, it really resembles that. But you know what, though? It's kind of funny. Um, you go back to that Monarch Science website, and one of the, the, I think it was the second image they put up, like the cave drawing. That's exactly what it is. And I remember us having this conversation on the podcast a while back. And we were talking about it looks like a mosquito, like you said. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because it does look like a mosquito, you know, like that design, that cave painting with the skinny appendages and those. And I still I don't understand the mantis arms. I just don't. But you know what? I'll tell you this. Those make for great weapons in a fight. So that I'm really looking forward to because, again, it's intriguing. So I I want to. Yeah. Also, just like, what do you like? Does it change your perspective at all if Mothra has like a wanting to ward off Godzilla on its wings, like with the eyes? Like, does that make you think that what if Godzilla and Mothra aren't buddy buddy in this movie? Like, so I don't get that... the I don't get the eye thing with the wings. Like, I don't understand that. I, I, maybe because I didn't watch the um, the panel. Which I'm going to do well, right after he, this podcast. Well, but. as you as you know, m- m- butterflies they do have sometimes like prints of, of eyeballs to ward off predators. Right. Oh, I get and what he, you're saying. And so he, and, yeah, and Mike Doherty said it. Those are actually Godzilla's eyes to ward off Godzilla. That's weird. so. What does that like? Does that does Godzilla want to eat Mothra? Oh, I, I hope not. Uh, I hope not. Oh. <laughs> 
Maybe it's egg. Maybe the egg. We all saw that. Already. I just, I just see this hysterical scene of Mothra flying through the city, just eye tailing it, and Godzilla is just chasing after Mothra, trying to just eat it. <laughs> well, um, I can't wait to see what what comes of it. I'll be honest. Um, I don't hate the design. I do not hate it. I'm just not accustomed to it. It's weird. It's different. When we first, oh God, I gotta bring it up again. Damn it! When we first saw images of Shin Godzilla, I was like, "What the hell's going on?" I, nobody had any idea. So we came up with our own theories. Like, well, maybe this is battle damage. Maybe this is him regenerating. Why, one of my theories that I spoke to uh, Matt about G ninety five was, "What if this is a direct sequel to nineteen eighty five, and he just came out of the volcano, and this is how he looks before he regenerates?" Because we got those images. Remember of uh, the Godzilla vs. Eva series, and there was a Shin Godzilla-looking Godzilla, but fully fleshed. So, yeah. you know, there was a lot of speculation as to why does Godzilla look like that. Then we saw the movie, and there really is no reason why Godzilla looked like that. Just That's the way uh, Anno wanted him to look. He wanted, Right? So, all right, so we eat that. With Mothra, it's different. There's no reason to speculate why does she look like that. That's the way she looks. She's an insect. So that's what it is. So I'm not, like, I I don't hate it. I'm not mad at it. And I can't speculate about it. I just can't wait to see it in action. I want to see the yeah. motion, the movements. That's what's going to make or break this Mothra for me, whether I like it or not. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. got to be honest with you. I'm going to say it right now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. But it's just, it is it. This is a drastically different design. Instead of radically, it's drastically so different from what we know. The wings are the same. Yeah, nailed that. The body type is something to definite. I, I definitely can't wait to see what they do with Mothra. And I hope, and I hope Mothra has more than enough screen time. So, do you do you think that we're going to see? Um... Someone brought this up to me that the Mothra we see, the winged one, um, isn't the only one as like there's going to be like. And I mean, and I guess we already know this because we do see a larva Mothra when Millie Bobby Brown's character is trying to touch it. Right. But they were saying that um, do you think there's going to be one? Than more than just one Mothra. Like, do we think we're going to get the traditional larva uh, at some point in the movie too? And I was just kind of thinking about that. Like, I wonder if, like, basically that scene where we see, you know, Millie Bobby Brown's character going to touch Mothra, maybe that's the second Mothra. And the one Mothra that's previously in the film maybe dies or something, and I'm, I was just kind of pondering about that, like, like I wonder if that's going to be a case, like, you know how, like, traditional Godzilla movies go, yeah. Mama Mothra dies, and the two larvae hatch, and they go and kick ass, yeah. you know, like, Tokyo SOS, where I just was like, uh... <laughs> I'm not even going to um, talk about Tokyo SOS, there's a movie I don't yeah. like, it's, it's that one. <laughs> but, um, I, I'm just wondering, like, what do you, what do you think about that? Um, well, if... <laughs> To be honest, if Mike Doherty is a traditionalist, which we're going to get to the next two monsters, it seems like he is. Uh, why not? You know, I like. I'll be honest with you. I don't like that theory. I don't like that idea because I don't want to be a re. It's already a rehash in sorts of sorts, right? I don't want it to be a complete rehash. I. I want that Mothra larva that Millie Bobby Brown is touching. I want that to be the Mothra that that's the only Mothra in the movie. You know, I don't need to see Mothra larva because what are they going to do? In all honesty, what are they going to do? It's not like the other movies where Godzilla was the bad guy. And then they came out and they, you know, wrapped Godzilla up in their silk. So I don't need to. I don't think that's the case. I think we're only going to get one Mothra and that's what, you know, and that's it. Um, but again, who knows? I could be wrong. Cause we don't, we don't know. The only people that know are the people or, making or it the movie. Could be simply like you were saying, flashback scene. You know, like um, we see flashback. King Ghidorah rips Mothra in half, and then they find the Mothra egg, and that's basically technically the second Mothra. But 
you know. I don't. The, I think it will be weird to do flashbacks only be well, not really because we did talk about flashbacks last week. So, uh, I guess, but I don't think that would be a flashback in this movie. I don't for for the sake because for the sake of argument, it just it doesn't feel right that we're gonna put all these. All these creatures on screen, but we're gonna show you like them killing this one. That only works for the fans. That doesn't work for the general audience. You don't go into that movie and be like, "Oh, they show why man, Mothra's a punk and died easily." Like, well, so why do I even invest yeah. into this character? Which they trying to make us invest into this character with the viral marketing. The, they call it the queen, quote unquote, of the monsters and things of that nature. So I don't think we're gonna get that. I don't think we're gonna see anything like that. I don't think we're going to see Mothra die. I can be wrong, but I just, in uh, my gut, I don't feel it. I, I just really don't want Mothra to be the traditional weakling, you know? Mothra I, has never really been a powerhouse, and I just, I don't want that to be the case in this. I don't want it to be, I don't want Mothra to be the traditional, you know, twig in the well, bundle of branches. You well, know? maybe. Maybe that's why that design is so drastically j- different. Maybe because of those pincers. Or not pincers, those appendages. She can smack <laughs> Godzilla around. Because think about this. You watch old Godzilla movies, right? And those little tiny claw hand things that you got. They, Especially like the Hesse series, let's say. Godzilla versus Mothra, right? Battle for Earth. And she goes to Godzilla's head and <laughs> like scratching. You hear the scratching sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not going to happen here. Those things look like they for blunt force trauma. Right. And they're going to pierce skin. They could pierce skin or they could, like, uh, the male Mudo did. Was it the male Mudo? No. Yeah, I think it was the male Mudo. I forgot which one. Well, they kind of, like, fish up Godzilla in that movie. And, like, yeah, it was the male, around, the male right? Mudo. Yeah, so you think those those pincers, those look like for blunt force trauma. Those things, as she's in the air, could swipe, clock Godzilla upside the head and ring his bell. I'm okay with that. If that's what they're they, going for. They, they, they also did say she's supposed to be extremely fast. Like, she can fly at the speed of, like, I think it was almost at the speed of light or something like that, they said. I'm not too sure. Well, But she's supposed to be really fast. I, that's that's something I'm not even, I don't even want to touch yet. That's something I just want to see because we know that either Rodan or King Ghidorah is causing tornadoes. We see Rodan doing the hurricane force uh, gales, uh, the gale gust when he flies by. Um, that silhouette right over the city and then whoo, the destruction path that follows. Yeah. Classic traditional Rodan, which let's get into. Let's get into Rodan. Let's talk about Rodan, my second favorite monster in all of freaking Toho. I love Rodan. And let me tell you something. They nailed them. Chase, they nailed them. They got it. They got it so right. So right. I'm going to tell you something. One of my favorite Godzilla movies of all time is Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in 1993. I absolutely love that movie from the soundtrack and score to the special effects. And I don't care what people say about Godzilla's thunder thighs in that movie. I love it. I love it. I hate Rodan. You think baby Godzilla was bad? I hated Rodan. I hated that small pterodactyl pterodon. Well, you hated Radon. I hated Radon. Yes, I hated Radon. Radon. I hated it. Oh, I hated it. So when I saw Rodan back in Final Wars, even though he's there for about one, three minutes, grand total, um, I loved it because it looked traditional to the original Rodan. Now, the original, what was it, 56, right? That was the, yeah, the movie came out. I think it was 1956. That Rodan is my favorite Rodan of them all. Like, I love it, right? This is that. This is absolutely, it's not that like that, but... This is absolutely the same feeling I get, I got when I first saw Rodan. Even uh, shit, I watched Rodan not too long ago, and I was like, "God, this movie's so good. God, this monster's so dope. Oh, I love you so much." I saw the image that SH Monsters dropped yesterday. <laughs> that <laughs> I've got no complaints about that, unless he spits fire. If he starts spitting fire, I'm gonna be mad and be like, "What's going on?" Maybe he's maybe he's throwing up lava because he's been in a volcano, right? But no, I don't I don't want it. I don't want it. I love that Rodan. What about you, man? What do you think of Rodan's new design? I, I Rodan was the 
basically when we saw that leaked Marquette, I was on board. I had no problems. But then when we saw the trailer, and that was basically the monster we got the most of, right. like, like that was like, bro, <laughs> there's no problem <laughs> here. That that design, that Rodan, that that to me is like the king of the Rodans. Like I I love that. You know, um, I was you know I wasn't a big fan of Radon, um, right? But you know Rodan from the Shawa series, like that that's the epitome of Rodan, of course. But for an updated design, this Rodan looks beautiful. Um, but on the lines of him spitting fire. Like, I mean, I don't know if I really am bothered by that because, like, I expect him to have some sort of ability, but I'm not sure really what. But, like, in the case, if he does spit up fire, it's not really going to bother me. Uh, it would be really cool if it's, like, molten fire, not, like, yeah. fire fire, but, like, it's, like, m- like you know, like almost like a vomit, if you will. Like, right. that would be kind of interesting. But I think that would be kind of weird for a giant pterodactyl you know that's why i don't want to see anything that's why i was goofing around with that um what i would like though if you want offensive uh capabilities besides the hurricane gust winds that he can you know conjure up with his wings what about some kind of uh armor piercing beak because the beak looks strong man that that figure if you like i zoomed in on it that beak looks strong and I could totally see if they go this route, if they go this route, and we have that uh, classic uh, uh, Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan versus King Ghidorah battle, right? Rodan pecking at King Ghidorah and, like, actually puncturing wounds into that into that body. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I, what do you think about that? No, I think it would be cool, too. I think it would be cool for, like... Uh... The you know him to use his beak to you know to skewer things and his claws like, and his claws that'd be cool. Like, I mean, he's like uh, his talons. Yeah, you uh, saw it in the first trailer. But also at the end of his wings, he has like hands. So that'd be interesting too. Yeah, remember, like at the in the first trailer, we saw him utilizing his talons when he like you know scoops the plane out of the sky and just like crushes it. Things like that. Yes, I love that. That oh. is my favorite shot from that trailer because that is like classic Toho monster violence fighting the military, and that's what I wanted so bad in Godzilla 2014. I know. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I can't be mad. I I agree. There was there was literally only wait. They did show something when the Mudo was getting ah, man. Then they show something where the Mudo Mama Mudo was getting shot up, but briefly. In like a news clip, maybe <laughs> probably a news clip. Damn. They all they did was show like stuff shooting at her, but she didn't like re- really retaliate towards any of the military stuff. I mean, the only thing you really see is when they're driving the train and you hear the Muto roar and right. it's over the cliff. Yeah, and there's that big old explosion and gunfire in there. That's pretty much all you see. Yeah. Yeah, Until no. the very end, when she gets them at at the bay, and and uh, they're like letting off on her with rocket launches and AK forty sevens, and she's just like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> but and Ford Brody tries to take her on with a pistol. That's my main man, Ford Brody. You don't disrespect Ford Brody on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he was a little bit naive in that part, a little bit too optimistic, if hey, you will. <laughs> I don't know. If you peeped it. He was aiming for the eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. but um no but dude you're absolutely right seeing rodan use you know take out that fighter jet traditional monster against military violence that's exactly what we want i want it you just said you want it i mean like think about it as fans growing up with this stuff that was very eye-catching and things that just stuck with us forever and yeah let's get that going and if they're gonna use rodan as that vehicle because it doesn't seem like they're gonna fight godzilla we seen that the still photo with the helicopters in the background, which was pretty much the end shot of the first trailer. Um, yeah, they they understand where Godzilla is. They understand what the threats are. Rodan and the military. I want to see that. That's going to be fun. 
But Ro- just imagine how like adrenaline filled that's going to be with how fast Rodan is and the jets flying after him. It's going to be like like a space battle from Star Wars. Oh, don't say <laughs> that, bro. You're already giving me willies, bro. I'm, that's it. <laughs> Man, listen. I'm, it's just perfect eye candy. It you know? is. Perfect eye candy from the traditional childhood. You yeah, know? you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you, man. I, I it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good time, bro. It's a good time to be a Godzilla fan. That's all I'm saying. Whether you like what you see or not, you cannot deny the fact that because this is in the spotlight now, we're getting more Godzilla. It's a good time. It's a good time because there was a stretch of time where we didn't get nothing, nothing, zero. And we didn't know if we were getting anything ever again. So just enjoy this. Enjoy this where, man, I can't even make a cool analogy. So let's just get to the next part. King Ghidorah. Woof. Chase. Sensei Ghidorah. <laughs> you, you were sending me the... Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let me preface. <laughs> preface this. Wasn't my finest moment. <laughs> right, let me preface this real quick. <laughs> so we're in a group chat, uh, us in the G Show, right? Uh, the G Show Facebook page, right? We're in a group chat. And <laughs> we also have, um, you know, our solo messages where, you know, when we just we'll talk one on one or whatever. But in the group chat, whenever something cool is going on, whether it's with Godzilla, whether it's with Star Wars or whatever the case may be, we usually whoever gets that information first, we throw it in the chat. So G73 Chase here being my main Godzilla man, I tell you, the right hand of the Godzilla, he gets all of the information, and he starts chucking it into the group chat, so we like we're all aware. So we're fine. <laughs> like as we go along, this is constant. Well, yesterday when the the SH Monster Arts figures start dropping, I think you showed Rodan and Godzilla only, right? Like those are the two you posted, right? Fine, we know what Godzilla looks like. That's not a that's not a shocking surprise. Rodan though is really cool. I was like, yeah. Then he <laughs> he puts he puts King Ghidorah. No, he asks. Should I put them up? And I go, send it well, to me. I, I put up the first image where you see basically just Ghidorah's heads and the guy's shoulders blocking the body. And then I'm like, that's probably all we're going to get. Do you want? But then I said, never mind. They posted the full picture. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, maybe you should just send that to me. Cause I'd be honest. I didn't care whether or not I see it because I mean, the silhouettes and everything. I mean, the, the, the poster from Comic-Con, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, that looks like King Ghidorah. We know what King Ghidorah looks like. They did not drastically or radically change that look. That is King Ghidorah. Just another iteration and a very fine one at that. To be honest with you, that's, 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 whoo. That's like top two in my book. That's like top two, uh, uh top three, top three, um, iterations of King Ghidorah. Um, so I wasn't mad, but I was like, maybe G95 doesn't want to see it. Maybe my main man, JR, doesn't want to see it. So just send it to me, Chase. Boop, he puts it up on the group <laughs> chat. I was like, oh boy, I don't think this is where we were supposed to go. Um, but regardless, dude, am I, am, am, am I, am I overhyping this too much? Let me ask you, am I overhyping this too much by saying that this is, absolutely freaking gorgeous possibly the best looking king Ghidorah we have ever seen no absolutely not it i mean it i guess it all is a matter of opinion because it's like do you like shawa the most do you like heisei the most do you like millennium the most or do you like this the most it's all you know there's people that there's people that go back and forth there's some people that worship shawa Ghidorah the most I personally love Heisei Ghidorah, but mm-hmm. after seeing Legendary's Ghidorah, like, to me, like, it's just the one up, and I absolutely love that design, you know? Yeah. So, I guess it's just all about person. I did not like Millennium Ghidorah at all. I did not like Grand Ghidorah. I did not like any, you know, from the Millennium. I, I The GMK I, one? Yeah, I just, it, it reminded me of a chicken, and it just... <laughs> It, it it just bothered me. It, it and it looked like it just it had like a ha- like a hairdo on the top of it that looked like like you know like Trump's hair. 
Oh, but <laughs> it just it it just did not. I mean, it was gold. It was you know orange, almost like Trump. But oh, no, this isn't a political post. Right, but right. Anyways, we're, this is not, just, we're not attacking the president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're not attacking him. It, it, it just, it's just not my favorite. Um, Hayes, I love Hayes's design. Um, but to me, like this, this looks like the granddaddy of King Ghidorah's. Like, and I, and I, like, I'm pretty sure this design, like, just from the SH Monster Arts, like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like it the most. Uh, I'm like, hey, say's cool, but I think I like this design a lot. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm in that boat. I, uh, this is again, this is where I have to say, because I fucking love this, this figure. It, it, this is. This is our first look at King Ghidorah, like legit detailed look, right? Because we saw we saw that image in the trailer where he flaunts his wings and there's the three heads coming down. We saw him in the ice. Hell, in that teaser, there's a picture of his snout in there somewhere, right? Um, and that's actually something I wanted to talk about because... Uh, we, we're going to get in there. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We're going to get to that next. Um, we see all that, but this is our first detailed look at King Ghidorah and... Good Lord Almighty, this thing blew my head off. I am a fan of King Ghidorah. I love Showa King Ghidorah, especially with his little jerry curls or his Jewy fro. fro. I love that. I love it. Especially the cackle. The cackle is the thing. Now, King Ghidorah's cackle in the Showa era is the thing that stands out to me the most. Not that he has three heads and is a golden dragon. It's that damn cackle. That thing gave me nightmares as a kid, but I love it so much, right? Like, I just, I, I, I walk around and I cackle like that every now and then because I don't care, right? <laughs> I, I really don't. So when the Hesse ever came around and I saw the, like, the, 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 the pictures on, online before I got to see the movie, and I was like, holy smokes, look at this King Ghidorah, it's the best thing ever! But then the role was like a modified Rodan screech, oh... So, hey, whoa, why, right? I, it bothered me. It bothered me. It still does. I still love that design. Oh, excuse me. Still love that movie. But that 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 road, that modified Rodan thing just drove me crazy. The, but the design, we're talking design. So the design was dope. Then that Grand King Ghidorah from Mothra 3 dropped. And I was like, what the fuck? That thing is gorgeous. It's a little heavy. It's a little heavy. But the 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 necks, the the freaking heads, like they just they look so good. To, especially the heads, the crowns. The, like I love that design. The Millennium, nah. I did not like the chicken thing is hysterical. I did not like the GMK Ghidorah. Even though I like that they tried to make uh the heads resemble Varon a bit. And I love Varon. I think that's one of my that's one of my favorite underrated monsters, right? Um, uh -huh. But the design was whack. He was too small. I, I just did not care for that design. He looked like a chicken. He did look like a chicken. <laughs> I, he really does. Um, he was like a snide bird. Reminded me of something out of the Al Al Animaniacs. <laughs> I ain't mad at you for that. And like... Kaiser Ghidorah, any four-legged Ghidorah, I don't count. So like Death Ghidorah, <laughs> uh, uh, Cre no Cretaceous Ghidorah was pretty cool, um, but he only had two legs. But like Death Ghidorah, uh, Kaiser Ghidorah, I don't count those too much. Kaiser Ghidorah does look dope though. I'm just I I personally like that that look. I just don't count it in a traditional sense. This thing, however, this thing is traditional in every sense of the word. That is the most traditional that I, I i mean honestly they said okay this is what king Ghidorah looks like how can we fix it let me tell you what really caught my eyes with this damn thing the freaking crowns on its head holy shit i love those crowns on its head i absolutely love it then you look at the back the, the back of the necks the spikes oh you kidding me or what dude it is it's almost flawless, but that's a toy design, right? Maybe they take liberties. We don't know. I cannot wait to see that thing in action, full-fledged. And that, now that we've seen these images of the toys, I honestly believe that should be kept under wraps. You don't need to show that in the trailer. 
But now I think about it, I might be contradicting myself. You might need to show something in the trailer for the people who ain't fans like us. So people like me, you, and the fandom out there, I don't need to see King Ghidorah in the trailer. Give me what we already saw, right? But as far as being fully realized, give me that in the movie. But then on the flip side of that is, I'll take somebody, I don't know, like my cousin, for instance, who doesn't watch any of these movies, um, in order to sell him on, well, Godzilla should just kick everybody's ass, right? No, this is the reason why. Look at the size of this thing. Look, it's got three heads and it looks menacing. Maybe he needs to see that instead of the toy because he's probably not going to look at the toys. You, you know what I'm saying? So Exactly. So it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. I, this image is more than enough for me. This toy image is more than enough for me. I do not need to see King Ghidorah in another trailer. I just cannot wait for this movie. Um, give me the roar, though. Give me the cackle. Give me the cackle in the trailer. Give me the cackle. Speaking of the trailer. So that's it. So, I mean, I'm finished with my King Ghidorah rattling. Do you, you want anything else you got to say about it? Or could we move on? Should we move on? Um, I don't really have anything to say. It's self-explanatory. That that King Ghidorah is badass, man. That that thing's like waffles on a day for pancakes, man. Take that shit over anything, um, <laughs> dude. Hold, fucking love him. Hold the chickens. Um, hold the chickens. <laughs> yeah, hold the chickens. <laughs> we can we can definitely move on. There's nothing really more to be said. So the final thing I want to get into is the small teaser that they showed, which kind of made me angry in, in a way, uh, only because it was pretty much uh, the original teaser we got at Comic-Con, the San Diego Comic-Con this year. And what, what I mean by teaser is before the trailer dropped, they showed Millie Bobby Brown at a console trying to call for help. They did that again here. The only thing is they actually intercut it with um, shots from the movie. Let's say shots of bodies in the water, which I thought was pretty cool. Shots of King Ghidorah's snout. Another shot of something I couldn't make out. My brother said it was the ship that was like in the uh, shot with Rodan busting out of the volcano when King Ghidorah rears back and the lightning flashes. You see the little ship down there. It's naval. I couldn't tell. Um, and then that was it. But the audio was pretty cool too. So let me get it. Uh, I, I want you to really get into this because I know I know you watch this a lot more than I have. So what did I miss? Um, what are some of the significance of these shots? And I'm pretty sure um, we're going to see this the in the trailer, one, right? The one, thing I, the one thing I really want to talk about, I'm going to save that for last. But um, okay. So... During that scene where your um, your where, you're, where um, your brother's talking about like the ship, um, I don't know exactly if that is the ship, but it is definitely a aircraft. But this, if I was watching specifically in that scene over and over, and when the lightning flashes in that scene, you see King Ghidorah's shadow flash in the background. Oh, I gotta look at that again, man. I could in not back see anything. Skies. But it's hard to tell because it's such bad quality. Right. But I definitely see heads and then a wing flash and stuff like that. And because it makes sense because all of the jets are flying towards it. So that was something that was really interesting that I kind of liked. Um, and then, but yeah, then seeing the debris in the water where it looks like bodies, some people say it's fish. Um, I technically see bodies. I mean, I can see it being fish or bodies, but I mean, it looks darker than that. I think it, it wouldn't be as necessary to make it fish. I think it's bodies, but I guess we won't know until the trailer drops. Um, really the trailer was the teaser, if you will, was just a teaser of environment, which it was just a bunch of like emotional images and I liked it. But what's really cool is about that shot of the, of the debris in the water is that it's a lit up shot. It's like a daytime, almost morning shot. And it's not, it doesn't have a hue or anything over it. It, it looks, it, it just kind of, you know, it, uh, it's like, I like, I would, I'm, I, I'm going to be excited to see a Godzilla movie where we see some daylight, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but for the most part of it, I mean, it really, uh, w w the one thing 
that really caught our attention is that during the scene where Millie, uh, where I'm going to call her by her character, Madison, where Madison is calling for help, she, you can hear the monsters roar in the video and you hear Godzilla and Mothra. Yeah. And that just sent chills down my spine, you know, calling for help and you hear Godzilla roaring and Mothra roaring and stuff like that. And, but when I, I was kind of thinking about something, like, I wonder if like when she hears Mothra roar and she starts holding her head in between her knees, like, I wonder if she's doing that. I was thinking, you know, for the obvious reason, you'd think it's because it's like, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. There's this world of destruction going on right now. But I wonder if her connection with Mothra is making her sedimental. Right. And I think, I think she's upset. Like, oh, sh- you know, shit, Mothra is going to get hurt, you know? And so I was thinking about that. Like, I wonder if she's sedimental about all of this going on, like the monsters being hurt. So I was thinking, like, that's going to be kind of interesting to see how that unfolds. But hearing Mothra's screech was just riveting, you know, excuse me, riveting. It, it, it sent shivers down my spine, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is just so cool. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm glad you pointed that out to me because I didn't hear that when I watched that the first couple times. I wasn't paying attention like that. And then you said, yeah, you know you can hear them. So I put my ear to the phone, and I was like, where is it? And then when I heard it, I was like, wow, there it is. And I agree. I got the shivers, too. I was like, wow. To hear Mothra, I mean, you know what Godzilla already sounds like. But to hear Mothra, that, yeah. Because it's it's classic, traditional Mothra. They didn't even try to change it. And I love that. And I hope that that's going to stick, you know? I hope that that wasn't just, all right, um, let's just do it for stock roar, right? Because we need we need something quick. So let's just take stock roll. I hope that's exactly what they're going to use. And I will be happy. Yeah, same. I I, I hope that's what sticks. I hope that doesn't change because it's going to be kind of disappointing, like, if that happens. <laughs> yep. You know, like, I want all the monsters to be authentic. I don't want them. I don't want Ghidorah to have squeaks instead, you know, of a cackle. <laughs> you know, they give us a cackle in the trailer and then it ends up being like a chew toy from a, for a dog. It's like, that. <laughs> so I get that. You know, no, no chirping, you know. <laughs> so I hope, yeah, I am on the same page. I hope none of that gets watered down or it's just there for a show. I don't think that's the case, though. I think what we get is what we're going to get. Um, I don't think Mike Doherty would do that to us. I mean, but the one thing that I kind of really wanted to talk about is when you say that in that teaser, we see Ghidorah's snout. Well, I thought so too in the beginning of it. Uh But when I looked at it, it has a very insect-like beak and like a jawline. And there's a lot of people saying that it's the the severed head from the one of the Mutos, like the female Mutos had preserved. Huh. And I was looking at it and I'm like, I'm still, you know, because that video is so low quality and stuff, but I'm kind of thinking that it might be, it might not be a Ghidorah head because I looked at the Ghidorah's heads and it doesn't have that like hinged beak mouth look in any of their heads and when i looked at it more and looked back and forth at the muto head from the movies it looks like a muto head it looks like the 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 mouth and so i'm wondering like wow like what's really going on here why do they have the head preserved i mean i'm not thinking too much about it because if it is the muto head then okay cool i'm not shocked by that if it being a muto head i'm more just concerned by like why Right. I Well, I guess time will tell because I'm going to disagree with you there. I do not think that's a Muto head, whether it's the severed one or a brand new Muto. I do believe it's King Ghidorah's head because, I mean, it looks like it's in that ice cavern that they showed in the trailer and the numerous still images. So that's where my money is, uh, King Ghidorah. I, I don't think in a teaser, okay, I don't think in a teaser they're going to show... Something else. They've already they already uh, showed 
and told us this is what we're gonna get. These are your three star monsters, um, four star monsters, I should say. Right? I don't think they're gonna put in a teaser that, and I, it's 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 irrelevant to what what they're trying to sell. You know what I mean? Uh, it's cool if it if it is. It's cool if, like, if it's let's say the severed Mudo head. It's like, hey, that's cool, right? Like, it's the beginning of uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. There's the severed head of uh, Mecha King Ghidorah. There it is, right? But I honestly don't think that's the case. I honestly believe that's going to be King Ghidorah's snout um, in, in that teaser trailer. Just because of the background. Just because of the background. It, it looks like it's in that ice cavern. So, you know, and, and again, that's, that's, the, that's the movie they're selling us. So that's just my opinion, though. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know. We will find out, hopefully, by the end of this week, when this trailer drops. Did he give us? Did he give us a date? He just said it's coming out next week. So it can be any day, starting Monday. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, I'm thinking Friday. Um, but I'm, you know, I don't know. Um. Well, fingers yeah. crossed for Wednesday. Let's 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 say Wednesday. Wednesday sounds like a good deal, right? Wednesday. Yeah. Quick question: to Ask you. Do you know by any chance did the did the Mutos have nostrils? They do, if I'm not mistaken. They definitely do. Okay. Because yeah, I don't know. I'm just I, I I'm looking at the image of it and stuff, and it just like I'm looking at all the things to it, and I'm just like the more I look at it, like it. The teeth and the way the jaw is curved, it it looks like a muto, but but then like parts of it too, I'm like, or is it Ghidorah? I don't know, but like, yeah, I don't know. To me, like, I think it maybe maybe it's just a hue and it's inside a lab, which I mean, it would be the ice caps and stuff, but like. I I don't know. Like I guess it's like I see it being Ghidorah and I see it being a Muto too. But it's like even if it's a Muto, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Like I'm not. It's not like, like I think that's cool. Like bring back something we've seen before. But like my thing is is like, but for what purpose? You know. Well, that's if anything. I if anything, if it's a Muto, I hope it's just basically to show like we're just we're just studying it. You know. Well, and that's what I mean. But in terms of the teaser. You're not, you, you don't tease us with that, especially, you, the first trailer showed King Ghidorah in the ice. It showed us that. It showed us that in grandiose fashion, right? So in this tiny little teaser to whatever we're going to get coming this week, why would they show Mudo in a similar, uh, in a similar background, in a similar uh, setting? And also, it wouldn't make sense for it to be frozen Let's put it this way. If it was the severed head, it wouldn't be in a frozen ice block like that. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm thinking is this is King Ghidorah. They're trying to maybe break him out, you know, of the ice, and he's still in a comatose state. It might be one. But again, I haven't studied that image enough to, to, to be 100% certain. All I'm saying is I've seen this little teaser, and that to me does not look like a Mudo. It looks like the snout of King Ghidorah because they don't show much. And if you look at that monster arts, uh, uh, those pictures that they put out, it, it just resembles, for me, it's the same thing. But the setting, the background, where they're at, there's no doubt in my mind that that's King Ghidorah. That that's not King Ghidorah, you know? And Unless, like, it's a whole new monster, the entity in one of the, one of the other unknown monsters um, my Doherty was making was going to be a Muto, then we got that answer. Nah. But other than that, I I I, I, I don't. That's I don't that's know. that's that's not the way you want to go with this market. Don't confuse the masses. Don't confuse the masses. Keep it simple. You already showed the first trailer. We already know who's gonna be in this movie. We already got Godzilla. We got Mothra. We got King Ghidorah. We got Rodan. We know this, right? Don't start confusing people. Don't start, especially with the second trailer. Don't be like, and we got this monster that you probably never heard of, and we got this monster. He's a Mudo. You don't do that. You just, that's poor marketing. That's poor marketing. That is the hype of us as fanboys. That's what we want. But that's poor marketing in terms of let's make money. And this movie, they want to make money. And I honestly believe they're going to make money. You understand? So you take that up. 
Don't listen to them fan theories. We need to separate yourselves, right? I know, and it's hard. It's hard for me because it's like I got. I'm like because I've been staying away from what the fans have been saying and stuff. Seeing it, it's like I, I I'm not in them like the process of I can't take things like fans say literally because I've known you know what fans come up with. They make these accusations and they're not true and they're overhyped. So it's like my bot my brain hasn't like realized that yet. But it was just like it was like a what if. You know? Yeah, I get you. I get you. But I'll tell you this. Highly unlikely. Highly. And I'm about 99.999% sure. But, that being said, I was also 99.999% sure we was getting a trailer (laughs) this weekend. And we didn't get it. So it could be a Mudo. I'm just saying. It could absolutely be a Mudo. But, um... That being said, let's wrap this bad boy up. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, I had a blast doing this podcast. I want to thank my main man, G73, Chase, a.k.a. Megalon. Yo, brother, thank you for being on with me. As always, and I guess if we get a trailer next week, we'll be in the same spot again. You damn right we will be. <laughs> so I hope y'all join us next week as we break down a oh, brand new trailer. It's not a what if we get a trailer next week. It's when we get a trailer next week. <laughs> That's true. So another podcast could come anytime during the week, depending, because I got work. But anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, that would do it for this episode of the Godzilla Block Party. I am G1. We're out of here. Peace.